Welcome back. Junkies on 106.7 The Fan, now broadcasting live from our DC Lottery Live studios downstairs here at 1015 Half Street. We do that because we have a very powerful man with us. I don't know about the that. The executive director of the NFLPA, oh, definitely D. True. Smith. What's happening? Man, I am fantastic. It's a uh, great summer, great uh, great new studios. Yeah, thank you. And and by the way, this is the first time we've had Dean on since he was re-elected for another... How, how long is the term? No, three-year term? Uh, it? some, it's been 74 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's another three-year term, yeah. Sometimes it feels like dog years. He had about 74 guys go against you, right? <laughs> It was like a Republican candidate. It, it was uh, slightly, slightly larger than the, the Republican <laughs> field out right now. But yeah, I'm happy to be reelected. Uh, looking forward to another uh, great, uh, great term with players. And by the way, what was that like just to be in the eye of that hurricane? Because I actually feel now it's gotten to the point now we're friends with D. Yeah. So now I take it personally. And as that <laughs> was getting, runs against him, your I get pissed. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of reasons for that. But like as that approached, yeah. the smear campaign came out. Yeah. And how much did that affect you? Did that piss you off, or you just knew that's the the game? That's just the game. I mean, there were certain NFL writers. Uh, well, sure. I won't say them. Sure. But I won't say their names. Who clearly <laughs> were being fed information by your opponents, sure. and they were trashing you. There were articles coming out yeah. specifically to trash you, like the eve of your ele yeah. election. Well, you know, look, I, I look back on when I was elected the first time, and remember that a uh, writer for NFL.com actually came out and endorsed Troy Benson. So. Uh -huh. You know, look, it's, it's just part of the game. You know, unfortunately, the way sport is, everything's about sport and competition. And, and But you know what? I ignore all of it. I've got a job. I rep represent the players. They're the only people who can elect me. Uh, I'm sure tons of people can write about stuff. But I'm sure there were other good candidates. Yeah, Didn't sure. you have a buddy who was running for Jason it? Jason Belzer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what your relationship is with By the way, I think you just catch it on radio. Better, yeah. I think that it was a cold stare at Hurts <laughs> from D. Smith. It was, it was just kind of a smirk. <laughs> it was like, really? Is your buddy? <laughs> um, yeah, look, I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, thrilled that the players made the decision that they made, and and that we're in it, right? So it it uh, you you have a job that kind of comes with being in the eye of the storm. And so that's cool. I, I, I hate to say we this, assumed but you were the most his, qualified. His Thank phone you. just lit up right before we went on the air. It was Jason Belzer. No, I, I hate to say it. You don't know who who it was. Don't even say who it is. I can't say yeah, it. Yeah, no, don't say. How it. about it's a guy who's in the news a lot. Don't say it. Does Brian? I don't know. Wow. Wow. Uh, no. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, so look, as big a big name player. as you can find in the NFL right now that oh, he has Roger? to deal with. Okay. Yeah, we're he Roger. We're headed into uh, <laughs> you know training camp. We're headed into training camp. I know there's a lot out there. Uh, happy to talk about you know things that have been in the news. It's been a busy off season. Well, we have to kick off then with the, with the Brady deal. Right sure. And and what's interesting is D and I were talking about this as we were walking down the studios, and it kind of made big news yesterday was. As uh, everybody was kind of positioning, the NFLPA was trying to go to Doty, right? That's who's been really good with the, with the NFLPA. Then the NFL, yeah, they're trying to get their 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 case heard there in New York, and their judge or whatever. And as this was all going down, a judge issued almost it's almost a gag order on you guys, essentially, right? What did he say? Yeah, I mean the the judges in a lot of these trials go um, um, uh, to great lengths to keep the process um, above board and and for the lawyers and everybody in, involved to uh, act in a dignified manner. And I, I don't have any problem with that. So happy to talk about how we always defend players. I've been on the show before, and, and you know w whatever case we've talked about, whether it was Rice, Hardy, Peterson, Brady. Um, we've always talked about things in a, in a way about players' rights and the role of the union to defend those rights. And um, but we're going to do that today, and I respect the process, respect the judge. Um, I, I certainly understand why he wants uh, or would want a, a scenario where people are toning down on the rhetoric and not making it so inflammatory. Um, and I think that's good for the process, but always happy to talk so about it. So why was this judge different? Were you expecting Doty here, or this guy Richard Kyle, who do, right. what do we know about him? Well, well we, we, we filed in Minnesota because a judge there, Judge Doty, had already ruled on the notice issue, which is an, an issue that is probably the pivotal precedent. issue. Right. Pivotal issue in, in, in the Brady Appeal, and, and it does establish a precedent. And we believed that because that ruling uh, from that judge uh, involved the issue of notice, and because we do have a pending contempt hearing uh, on the issue of commissioner discipline currently pending in Minnesota, that that made sense to, of where to file it. We're going to be in New York, and what was we, your reaction when you found out that he was going to? 
Yeah, I mean, I've been a trial lawyer my whole life, so... You Didn't know, surprise the, you. Well, no, I mean, and, and, and judges make decisions about what forum you're going to be in, and for lawyers, you, you pivot, and that's where, that's where you're going can to be. You, can you comment on the NFLPA issued a statement shortly after the ruling, right? And you gave it without inflammatory statements or anything. Right. Can you say what your beefs are with, sure. with the ruling and how it was uh, given out, sure, et cetera? Th yeah, there's three or four main issues for the players, and, and this would be for any player, regardless of, of um, whether it's Tom Brady or anybody else. But just like the issue of uh, in, in Adrian Peterson, um, the, the law is clearly established that you have to give a, a person notice about what rule they're going to be punished under. And in Adrian Peterson, if we remember, he got punished under a new policy that applied to old conduct. In the Brady case, the, the notice issue is somewhat similar because it is a rule that is not even applicable to players. It's a rule that's applicable to clubs. And which rule is this? This is the, the, the guidelines that Troy Vincent used to impose the discipline on, on uh, Tom Brady was under a rule, a competition rule, that applies to clubs. There is specifically about the spelled out for specifically spelled out for clubs, Correct. not players. And there is, a, there is a collectively bargained rule that applies to tampering with equipment or uh, uh, rules that protect fair play. That rule is collectively bargained. That rule wasn't used. So our argument is always going to be um, that the players should be subject to the collectively bargained rules. And when someone imposes either a penalty or imposes a process that's inconsistent with the collective bargaining agreement, that's our job of, uh, of a union to fight it. I also found it interesting and fascinating that you guys point out that you even had a problem with Troy Vincent ruling on this because that wasn't collectively bargained. Absolutely. Why so, is Troy Vincent? I thought Roger Goodell was ruling on this. Well, the, so did we. And uh, the collective bargaining agreement explicitly spells out that only the commissioner is the person who's empowered to impose discipline. So when that decision was delegated to Troy Vincent. Are you fist pumping when he's doing that? Well, we didn't know. You didn't know until the issue right. of the statement? Well, until, well, we didn't know until they told us that they were actually having Troy Vincent do it. Um, we stand on the collective bargaining agreement. So, you know, for example, we had a, a, a great lawyer retire uh, uh, yesterday in the office, Tim English. Uh, been a, a lawyer for the PA for 33 years, and and during uh, his goodbye speech, he said, "Look, when I my first collective bargaining agreement was in the like about 50 pages. Uh, our collective bargaining agreement now is over 400 pages. Mm -hmm. But our job is to defend that agreement as it relates to players' rights. So if there is something that occurs that is blatantly inconsistent with that." Our job as lawyers so is to protect our players. My guess, what would their argument be? You're a trained lawyer. Sure. So you can make a devil's advocate argument on all of that. What is their argument that Troy Vincent did it? Is it that you can delegate a decision and ultimately Troy went to Roger Goodell and ultimately he might make the argument that Roger Goodell did make the decision? Yeah, I mean, you can always, look, our, our job lawyers make arguments. And, right. uh, and I've seen their papers and, and know what their arguments are. And, and I'm sure their arguments are going to be about what, what is within the commissioner's power to lawfully delegate. But when I look at the collective bargaining agreement and it says the commissioner shall, hmm. Um, I read that as the commissioner shall be the exclusive person to impose discipline. And when that is delegated, um, that is inconsistent with the collective bargaining agreement. What is this? I don't understand, and I, I think a lot of fans don't understand is, all right, so Goodell works for the owners. Right. Essentially. Sure. That's what he does. Sure. The 31 owners. Sure. He, all, he hands, the, hands down the suspensions, but he also hears the appeals. Right, and what's been interesting is over well, over over the the period of time, uh, there have been instances where the commissioner has delegated the hearing to someone else, and we've been we've been fine with that. We've always insisted that that we should have a neutral arbitrator, but under the collective bargaining agreement, the commissioner has delegated the hearings or for those appeals to other people. That didn't occur here. Mm -hmm. So our, our, our job, our duty really, is to take a look at the, the, the process and the penalty, how those two things are implemented, and if those things are inconsistent with the CBA, 
All right, we're talking to D. Smith. He's the executive director of the NFLPA. And let's just speak uh, directly to that one issue because I know you hear this all the time. We hear this all the time where people go, I mean, Darren Ravel tweeted the other day about how terrible the, the CBA is. And people always point to, because of this exact same thing, the players agreed to this. They agreed to allow Roger to do this, to rule on this, et cetera. And I don't want to speak for you, but I know sure. I've had conversations in, in, with people from the NFLPA. And the argument, I think, is, correct me if I'm wrong, is, okay, we, in, in any negotiation, there's give and take. Absolutely. And if 2,000 players are not affected by this, and maybe every year, what, maybe 10 players might be affected by this, right. you know, what are you going to do? You're going to hold out and, and you're going you're to lose money? And lose money for the 2,000 players that will never, ever, ever be affected by this? Or. We well, do the best deal you can for your constituency, and then in these 10 instances every year where this might happen, then you fight them tooth and nail. Right. Well, it's a little bit of both. I mean, look, collective bargaining is as messy and as complicated and as, uh, uh, you know, tough as anything that anybody will ever go through. And, and a good deal is a deal where both sides walk away with, without everything they wanted. Um, the issue of neutral arbitration came up during our collective bargaining agreement. The owners did not want to have a neutral arbitrator when it came to personal conduct. Uh, they didn't want to have a neutral arbitrator when it came to drug policy, but now we do. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, they didn't want a neutral arbitrator uh, back in 2006 as it related to, to on-field fines. Now we do. So the only two instances where we have actually walked back on the exclusive power of the commissioner has been since 2009. So we do have a neutral arbitrator for both drug policy and for um, uh, on-field fines now. When you get to where we are with, with uh, personal conduct, the owners have resisted a neutral arbitrator since the beginning of time. Why do you think that is? I think that they believe that they lose control if they have a neutral arbitrator. So the one thing that the players uh, uh, didn't agree to is the collective bargaining agreement doesn't license someone to be unfair. This collective bargaining agreement does not license someone to not follow the dictates of the collective bargaining agreement. And when you look at whether it is Bounty, Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, or even Greg Hardy. In all four of those cases, the one thing that the arbitrator used to overturn the punishment was what? The agreement. The collective bargaining agreement. Yeah. So no one can stand up and say that this deal allowed Roger Goodell to do X, when in the last four cases it was the same deal that we use to overturn his decision. Right, so and anybody who wants to think that way is just somebody who either doesn't care or doesn't like to read. Or they have an agenda. They, they have, have an agenda. agenda. Right. Yeah. All right, so again, explain how Goodell, in your opinion, is violating the agreement, when it, in this case, with Brady. Yeah, there, there's four, uh, three or four main, main issues. One is the issue of delegation that we've talked about. Second, uh, the issue of notice that we've talked about, that it's a rule that applies um, uh, uh, to, to the clubs and not to the players. And lastly, when you look at the Wells report, our, one of our main issues is the conclusion of the Wells report said that it was more probable than not that the player was quote unquote generally aware of someone else's conduct. And, and our concern here is that if the standard for issuing a penalty is something like more probable than not that you were generally aware um, that is a standard that appears nowhere in the collective bargaining agreement. You can hang with us for another segment, right? Oh, yeah. All, All right. Here. D. Smith, Executive Director of the NFLPA, join us with us right here on the Junkies. Welcome back. Junkies on 106.7 The Fan hanging down. Downstairs at our DC Lottery Live studios, 1015 Half Street with the Executive Director of the NFLPA, D. Smith. What's your summer like? Do you get a couple weeks <laughs> off? Uh, Did you go on a vacation? Uh, I went away. Uh, I was away for three days uh, last week at the beach and uh, spent most of the time uh, on the phone. On the phone, yeah. uh, writing a brief. Um, <laughs> writing fun. Uh, yeah, good times. Really One of my buddies good. texted me yesterday. He's a, he's a friend of the show. Sack Sean Mike is a character on the show, been a character for many years. And he wanted to call into the show. He's like, Do you have a racket guest tomorrow? I was like, Well, we have D. Smith. He's going to be in the studio. And he's like, Oh, he's the second most powerful black man in the country. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I don't think he said it exactly uh, like that. But. Yeah. You know, Isn't that there's, nobody, there's <laughs> nobody in my family who thinks that's true. Uh, absolutely no one. I mean, you got to put LeBron in there probably, too. LeBron, yeah, D, or, or, Obama. Or thousands of people. Let's put, let's put thousands of people in front of I can't think of many others. Can we talk about, and you just say whatever you sure. can say, about the whole, the break, the smashing the phone and all yeah. of that. What is what is your official sort of stance on that and how the yeah. phone factors in? From what I read, Tom and his people claimed that they were told that they got the information they needed right. from the phone. Look, we, we stand on, I mean, we stand on process, and I'd you know, rather not crawl through a lot of details, but our process issues uh, with the league are, are issues of notice, due process, fairness, delegation, and what the CBA um, um, entails. And, and that's where this case is going to be decided. And I think that the, the important issues here um, for, for our players is that they can rely on a process um, where they know what the punishment is going to be, they know what the process is going to be, and they know that it's going to be consistent with the collective bargaining agreement. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that... How does that relate to the phone, D? Well, uh, you, you can <laughs> make. I didn't want to get can make, I know, I know. I'm you, can make, uh, you, can make, you can make the <laughs> argument that it, nothing does. Right, because look, the the four game suspension um, was was predicated on on an investigation on a process that the league followed. We made the argument that that process was inconsistent with the CBA, and and I know, and the record is clear about um, the information that was turned over to the league. The record is the record about what what information the league has. Everybody is going to make their arguments or their their personal judgments about what people do, but at the end of the day, you know, lawyers rely on what the record is under oath. Because essentially, he's being punished because he smashed a phone. Well, he's actually right. No, he's, no, he's being he's well, being punished because a a a a, 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 a paper book. came out and said that it was more probable than not that yeah. he was quote unquote generally aware of what other people did. Right. And our argument is. That more probable than not that you were generally aware is a is a standard that is so low. It's a leap. It, that it's a it's a it's a it's a leap upon conjecture. But it's us. football. It doesn't have to be beyond a reasonable doubt. It's football. No, but so, I mean, if I if I just applied a common sense test to play devil's advocate, right. common sense, and I think most fans believe that the Patriots probably did cheat, and that Tom Brady knew it and was aware. I think that's what most people think. And I think that is a reasonable assumption based on what we have heard. Yeah, but the standard that we have is dictated by a collective bargaining okay. agreement. Not and what is what that the, standard then? That standard, the law of the shop are, are, is, is, I believe, you know, something is that's, it a preponderance that's preponderance of evidence. Of evidence. Okay, well, so, so more probable than not is similar to preponderance of evidence. But general awareness is not. Okay, but that's the next but sentence That's the there. problem. That's the problem. The problem is if it for so us, more you have no pro so really you don't have a problem with the more probable than not I don't have any problem with the standard of proof that has been generally applied right. pursuant to our collective bargaining right. agreement it's when you change that and mm -hmm. go lower to that, that what is can I'm you gonna, I'm, real quick I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot and sure. I love you you know that I'm just yeah. gonna ask the question because here we go here we go. And you yes. can answer it, and you yes, will answer I wish it. I was six so foot one. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. You're yes. Gonna six, six, six. Finally. You're going to answer it the way you have to, and understand that. But yeah. I just think the listeners need to hear the question. Sure. Do you think Tom Brady knew that the balls were deflated before the game started? No. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you. He does about represent about the players? Understood. And I just had to ask the question. Right. I mean, you asked me. I no. I give. I give my opinion. Yeah. Answers no. I, I want to ask you about the beef that you guys have with this guy that was associated with the Wells report that you thought was maybe being a consultant or something, and then all of a sudden now he's on. He's at the table and he's almost yeah. like taking the owners. What is what is the issue there with this person? Well, the other issue on on appeal is if if you're uh, if 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 the commissioner is going to sit as the arbitrator in the case then this this idea that a lawyer who represents the National Football League is the person who's going to help him out uh, in the hearing to us is also problematic we stand on the collective bargaining agreement and I know it's just it's not sexy it's not fun um, right. it's not interesting but, but when two parties go through as, as tortuous uh, a process that we went through for the collective bargaining agreement, um, we insist that the parties follow the rules. So what did they do wrong? In other words, Roger can't have somebody he consults with? Is that the idea? Yeah, that's the idea. And, 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 and it's not so much that he can't have somebody that he consults with. 
we, we, we would argue that the, the collective bargaining agreement says that this should happen. And, and when you try to change it into a gray area or bootstrap another process that's not articulated with the CBA, we take the view that that's inconsistent. I got a question. We've heard. Oh, you got like a bunch now. I don't okay. No, I'm just. <laughs> I mean, are like, you done? I'm a new. Out. I believe everything I read. Yeah. But <laughs> we've heard multiple reports say that the league went to Tom and said, "Hey, just own up to what you did. We'll get you know. We'll negotiate some sort of sort of a reduction, just like they do with most guys. They did it with Cardi. They did it with Bell and all these guys. We'll just own up to what you did. We'll find you. Maybe we'll give you a game or two. And he said, no, I don't want any games. That's why I'm going to court. What can you say to that? Um, I mean, we never get into public discussions about um, offers. Um, I, I know what the facts are here, mm -hmm. and um, that's not true. Okay. Can we shift off Tom Brady for a second? By the way, that's big. Yeah, that he's is. saying there were no offers yeah. made Because by Tom Brady's getting killed publicly because it, it, the perception is he's saying, nope. I'm not even taking the game. I'm not taking a quarter suspension. I'm going to court. I'm going to fight it all the way. Right. But if he was never even offered the reduction, even though that's what the NFL is saying, then that's huge to me. Right. Can we shift off of uh, Tom Brady for a second? Sure. What do you think about the general, kind of like the, the league in general, how it's moved? Now you've got games Thursdays, yeah. Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays. We love it as fans. How are right. the players feeling about it? Well, uh, I think two things. Uh, one, it, there are players who, who love playing on Thursdays. There's some who don't. Um, a lot of it comes down to, to how coaches practice on those weeks and on those weeks following a Thursday game. Um, I like it because it does keep football on, a, on sort of a perpetual cycle. Um, if we come to a conclusion, however, that that the, the way games are being structured threatens the health and safety of our players, then that's when we're going to step in um, and take a look. And we do take a look at the, the injury uh, data and slice the injury data. Um, like for, even for the extra point deal, right? Right. There was talk about, well, this is going to be more dangerous for the players because now they're going to have to actually play on an extra point. Right, and, and, and those things, again, going back to, to your thing, there are some things that fans would love or, or hate, but at the end of the day, you know, again, at the risk of, you know, making everybody angry, um, we don't spend uh, our time as a union trying to figure out what fans would, would love. At the right. end of the day, our job is pretty simple. Can you talk about what's going on here with the Broncos and the Cowboys and collusion potentially charges. collusion, you know, in regards to negotiating with some of these receivers? What's going on there? We're, we're looking hard at that issue. We made it uh, abundantly clear to the teams that, that we certainly hadn't decided that we weren't going to go forward. And uh, the allegation is what? That collusion between the two teams. Between Denver and Dallas. In other right. words, the owners or p personnel, front office people are talking to each other and kind of saying, hey. Gaming the deals. Yeah, hey, we're only going to give them this much. Correct. You only give them this much. Correct. And, and once again. And you have proof of that or there's. <laughs> <laughs> you're smiling. Um, the, that, you know, look, even though both players ended up with great contracts, um, if we believe that the conduct by the two teams violates the CBA, we fight that and we do that because just because it might work out for two players on on day one doesn't mean that it may not uh, that doesn't mean that it may work out for those players down the road so if teams, plus they could have gotten more here potentially well, or or if or even if they did if teams collude and we have proof of collusion we were we will always file a case and go after those two teams is that something that's being fought in court now or is that something that's in-house uh, we haven't made a decision yet to formally file but we made it clear to the teams um, that you're investigating. They, that, that we're investigating. Do you I feel make like this is too serious right now. Let me ask you a question. Let's <laughs> like, have you watched right. Ballers? <laughs> uh, no. So D. You're Smith, not executive now. director, you're not has watched. Do you have <laughs> shows that you watch? Uh, like, do you want to, do you, Karen? Do, they, do you sit down and watch shows together? Does she make you watch the the Bachelorette? Or yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're big on cooking shows. Uh, none of that's true. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't really watch that much TV. I mean, yeah. I, I, I live a boring life. I mean, right. I watch PBS and news and. You're Nature. literally you're always a life. no, but you're boring. always attached to your cell phone. Uh, it doesn't leave you. How many do you have? Uh, I only have, uh, what kind of question is this? 
Um, <laughs> you know what? I see my this lawyer. This is the one calling. I always He's see. He's saying, well, "How many phones do you see?" <laughs> um, uh, I just have one. Um, yes, it's an iPhone. Did you switch from the Samsung to Don't the iPhone? See, I knew that was coming. I just knew that was coming. Knew whatever was coming. data knew was. that was coming. Um, uh, I carry one phone and and get a lot. What's of it like when you're executive director of the NFLPA and uh, you're in charge of so many? <laughs> how many players are you in charge of? Uh, I'm, I'm not in represent. charge of any you're, of them. You're not in charge, uh, but you they, represent. Yeah, they, I, I work for them. Uh, there's 2,000, uh, 2000 uh, about 2,000 players. 2,000 active af players. Af after the cut down. Right. Obviously, there's a lot more in camp right now. So at any point, it might be 2,500, 3,000, whatever yeah. the number may Correct. be. And... Uh, you know, even if it's happening just once or twice a week or something, somebody gets in trouble. I mean, your phone is blowing up at all times, at all hours Sheldon of the day. Richardson. Yes. All like, times. when do you get the Sheldon Richardson phone call? Uh, I get phone calls pretty much instantaneously. Right. So, is the phone right next to your your head when you're sleeping? Uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't. You know what? I'll be dead honest with you. Um, you I, turn it off. I don't. I I turn it off during, at night. Good. And 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 look, I've, there's a great staff at the NFLPA office, about 140 folks. So, you know, w when I'm asleep, we've got more than great people that can um, handle it. That can handle it. Yeah. Right. Real quick. Do you ever just light into question. the guys, even though they got to represent them? Do you ever just light into the guys and go, "What are you thinking? <laughs> You're driving 140 miles an hour." You, oh, you yeah. Stupid. You, I mean, I'm sure if you talk to the guys, uh, they, they know <laughs> that I, I, you know, look. I, I think it's a great game, uh, but I do talk to our guys a lot about what their responsibilities are as men and, and good husbands and good fathers, and they've they've heard that over and over and over again. Uh, probably probably too much from me. Um, but but I do believe that, look, at the end of the day, there is a very short window for our guys to play. And the great news is that the way this collective bargaining agreement works, you have minimum salaries, there's no, there's no bottom feeders, teams have to spend the money, um, teams get to carry over, we want our owners to spend virtually every dime, and now they have to spend 99% of the salary cap. But your window for that opportunity is about three years. And if you don't maximize that window to get more out of football than football gets out of you, you're a moron. Well, All right, yeah. here's a quick question because I know we got to run. I had a quick question. I know we got to break. Hold on. The Ray Rice deal. Do you have any any evidence that there's collusion from the owners and not giving this kid at least another shot? I think it's problematic that Ray Rice isn't at least in a camp right now. Right? I, I, I do. Does he have do, a case? Do you think he'll ever be in a camp? Uh, I hope so. Do you have? Does he have a case? If he's not invited, ever, right. let's say in the next two years, he's never invited to another training camp. Given his resume, does you he don't like anything else. You can all, you can always make arguments. I think the the focus for us should be: look, he's a young man who made a horrific mistake and has paid dearly for it. Um, but I but I think he should be in a camp. Yeah, we believe in redemption. And we right? all do. I right. mean, what, what person should? Yeah. All right, all right it's D. D Smith. D, thank, thank you very much. Oh, awesome, fun. guys. Man, yeah. thank y'all very much. Yeah. Have a good summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, hold on. We'll talk to him during the break. All right, don't go anywhere. Thank you.